I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard, and this is Mystery Teachings. Is it possible to travel beyond our physical body while we're still alive here on Earth? Is this something we can learn to do consciously? And if so, what mysteries might it reveal to us? Astral travel is defined as the art and science of expanding our consciousness to travel beyond the body and often to the stars. We have this ability to do this because we are infinite spiritual beings. We are multidimensional beings. Astral travel is a natural part of our experience as spiritual beings operating this vehicle that we call a physical body. We all astral travel naturally, but most of the time we aren't conscious of it. Let me share with you a personal story about some of my early encounters with astral travel. I learned about some of my earliest experiences with it from stories that my mom shared with me that I really had no conscious memory of. But apparently, when I was just a three-month-old baby, my mom had several waking dreams where she'd look up and she'd see that I was flying in circles over their bed. She'd tell me, come back down, but I was just having too much fun. And according to her, this became a nightly routine. Then there was one night where she heard me crying by the bed in her dream, and she kept trying to pick me up. And when she finally did, apparently my head came off. Needless to say, my mom thought she was going to die of a heart attack. And when she startled awake, I wasn't there, of course. But then a few minutes later, she did hear me crying. So she jumped up out of bed and ran into my room. And when she saw that I was okay and just wanted to be fed, she said to me, okay, Teresa, that's enough. You're going to scare me to death. Don't you ever do that to me again. Now at that point, she says, I looked at her with a smile and I gave her a wink at just three months old. And then she never saw me do it again. Now, I've always had a very active and vivid dream time, and much of it felt very real. But it wasn't until I was an adult that I consciously started to try astral travel again. What's interesting is that as an adult, when I started to explore with it, I really struggled. I had a hard time because I had this sense of needing to be in control. And not surprisingly, it was my mom who brought astral travel back into my life as an adult. She was very involved with the Monroe Institute, a group of consciousness explorers who specialize in techniques for journeying out of body. The Monroe Institute uses technologies like binaural beat brainwave entrainment and various visualizations to shift into an altered state for astral travel. During my first time at their week-long gateway program, they taught us several different visualizations to try. We'd lay down and we'd imagine floating up out of body or sitting up and moving out that way. We could barrel roll out or we could use the rake technique where it's like someone stepping on a rake at your feet and you pop out. We had all these different techniques and we were instructed to try all of them to find what works for us. Now, as I was trying these different methods, I noticed that every time I started to feel that shift out of body, one of two things would happen for me. Either my mind would kick in, I would say, oh, it's happening, and then that would slam me back in again, or I would feel disoriented and I'd snap back into my body because I didn't feel safe. In the end, it was a great week of training, but the way I ended up doing it was to just sit up and project my consciousness into a journey while still maintaining awareness of being in my body. When I then later came to the Modern Mystery School's training on astral travel, I found a technique that really worked reliably for me and felt really safe. The method from the Mystery School gave me a reliable tool to confidently astral travel, which is why I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you today. And before we get into that though, let's get clear on the do's and don'ts, as well as address some of the myths about astral travel. And even more important is that we need to get a better understanding of why we would astral travel in the first place. There's a whole purpose and art to astral travel. Now this brings up an important question. What is the purpose of astral travel? 
Astral travel is an art form that is about moving beyond our normal everyday reality. Our ultimate purpose for astral travel is to progress toward our full potential and divinity. How does it help us do that? Well, with astral travel, we open up our perception of our multidimensionality. We learn about ourselves and our purpose, and we can take what we learn from it and then put it into service in this world. Some people want to use astral travel to explore, and others are simply curious. Others may doubt it's even possible and want to see if it's something they can actually do. And some people have a sense that they're already doing it in their dreams and they want to learn how to do it consciously. Whatever the reason may be, my word of advice is that astral travel is not to be used lightly. It's not about becoming a tourist on the astral plane and it's definitely not to be used for any sort of ill intent. If you can believe it, we've actually had people inquire to learn astral travel from us so that they could spy on a boyfriend or girlfriend who they thought was cheating. It's definitely not to be used for that. Think about this. How would you change your life if you knew that everything you thought, said, and did was being recorded? Well, guess what? It is. And who's recording it? You are. But you're recording it from the perspective of your higher self rather than the personality. Oh, well, one of the ways we can use astral travel is to consciously review those records. We can become more aware of our higher self's perspective on how we're living our life. And with that perspective, we can see where we might want to make adjustments to be more on track and live life in greater alignment with our higher self. How exactly does this happen? Well, you may not have realized it, but you're already very experienced with astral travel. Many people aren't aware of it. Many people don't even think that they dream at night. But I can assure you, everyone does it, whether we remember it or not. This means we already have this ability innate within us. We just need to remember it and become conscious of the process of actually doing it. Let's go back to that recording of our thoughts, words, and deeds. How does this work? Well, every night when we sleep, as we go into the deepest parts of our sleep cycle, we reach a very slow delta brainwave state of less than three hertz. It's a dreamless sleep. And when we're in this state, our higher self guides us up out of our body, up through a tunnel of light. And we travel into the higher spiritual planes, all the way up to what's called the Akashic Zone. And there, we record everything that we thought, said, and did that day. This is something everyone does without exception. What exactly is astral travel? Well, the word astral is derived from the Greek word astron, meaning star. The word was originally used by the Greeks to describe the home of the gods. These gods lived among the stars, such as Mars and Venus, Jupiter, and the constellations. The art and science of astral travel is learning how to consciously shift what's called our assemblage point beyond our body. The assemblage point is the vantage point from where we perceive and assemble our view of the universe around us. Although astral travel is often depicted as though we're leaving the body behind, we don't actually leave the body when we astral travel. I say that because our spirit is infinite. So we're simply shifting our perspective to another point within our infinite spirit. We're moving the assemblage point from point A, which tends to be here in the body, usually around the head, to point B, wherever we decide that to be. Surprisingly, one of the biggest challenges is that we're actually always astral traveling. It's not just when we're asleep or trying to do it consciously. We're astral traveling throughout our day. In fact, our astral travel experience can be so real that we may have trouble making the distinction. 
Well, what I mean is that we're always traveling in the mind. So where is our mind traveling to? Is it in the past, the future, the now? Are we daydreaming? Are we living in a fantasy world? Or are we present in the here and now? If you're not in the here and now, truly present with what's in front of you, then where are you? And for that matter, are we really even here? In this physical life on Earth? Or is this just a projection from the hologram? Perhaps we're really at the great central sun and our assemblage point is just projected here into this density level. That's a concept we discussed in season one. Some mystery teachings say that we're always astral traveling, except for when we're in the here and now, fully connected to our divinity and fully conscious of ourselves. So how do we get our awareness fully into the here and now? The key is to understand our multidimensional nature. Astral travel gives us a way to explore and experience this multidimensional reality. Through learning this art, we can strengthen our focus and become more aware. We can stop wandering in the mind and start to get clear about where we really are within our multidimensional experience. Most people aren't approaching life from a multidimensional awareness. We get so focused on this physical dimension, but even then, with such a narrow focus, how much of it are we really even conscious of? We have the ability to perceive a wide range of frequencies using our five physical and five spiritual senses. Yet most people are only consciously aware of less than five to 10% of what's coming in. This is a very one dimensional way of living, but we are multidimensional, which means that we are operating on multiple dimensions at the same time. Every time we astral travel, we're developing our conscious connection with these other dimensions. In season one, we talked about our multidimensionality and the metaphor of having 22 archetypal extensions of our true self. It's like these archetypes are playing out 22 movies and we're the lead actor in each of these. One of the ways we can use astral travel is to visit these parallel lives. We can get to know who we are in our fullness and the archetypes that are a part of our multidimensional self. A big part of achieving our full potential is to become fully aware of our multidimensionality and then bring it all into one. As we become aware, we can start to merge these aspects into one experience. This is what it means to consciously live a multidimensional life. This is actually one of the biggest reasons to use astral travel. It's a tool to awaken ourselves so fully that we develop deeper connection to our multidimensionality. Let's back up a moment. How do we define consciousness? Well, science often defines consciousness as a byproduct of the brain, but our true consciousness exists beyond our physical body. According to the first hermetic principle of mentalism, the all is mind, meaning, Spirit is primary. This intelligent spirit is how we define consciousness. And the universal mind really has nothing to do with this physical body. The body is a vehicle for our individuated expression of the universal mind, and we can easily move out of this vehicle. When it comes to astral travel, the biggest challenges we face are the limitations within our own mind. Our fears and limiting beliefs will prevent us from experiencing our multidimensionality. What are some of these fears that we may need to overcome? Well, one common fear that people have with astral travel is related to the myth of the silver cord. There's a lot of literature out there that says that when we astral travel, there's this silver cord that connects us to our body. And the fear is that if the silver cord was ever severed, we could lose our way. And if we're unable to get our way back to our body, we might die. But not to worry, this is a myth. 
The fear has been used to scare people from ever trying the art of astral travel, which is a huge disservice. Astral travel is such an important tool for us to experience and identify our true self beyond our physical body. We are multidimensional. We are eternal beings. We have never been born, and therefore we can never die. To be fed this fear that if we leave our body, we might die or get lost, that's incredibly disempowering. It's reinforcing the idea that we are our body and that our body is everything. In truth, the silver cord is an illusion that the mind creates so that we have some sense of control, but we never need to be afraid of that. The worst thing that would happen if we lost conscious awareness while astral traveling, such as if we fell asleep, is that we just wake up again in our body. Our higher self will take over and get us back to where we need to be. Another fear that may come up is that of losing control. When I first started to consciously astral travel, I struggled with this fear. And it was coming from some place very deep within. At that time, I was honestly trying to control all aspects of my life. I was very much a type A personality. But those fears are not founded on reality. They're based on our own deep-seated subconscious fears. Honestly, it's about not trusting ourselves or not trusting spirit to guide and protect us. Now, having said that, it's important to be mindful when it comes to astral travel there are some essential guidelines that we want to follow. Today's New Age approach can often be a free-for-all of do whatever you want, but that can get us into trouble. As with all things, we need to use discernment. When we don't use the proper methods to astral travel, we can actually cause stress to the energy body. We see the results of this in people who have an emergency room or near-death experience type of out-of-body process. In these cases, their conscious awareness usually is thrown out through whatever chakra is most open. This process causes trauma to that chakra, and then when they come back in, it can be more difficult to reintegrate. Their psychic centers may sometimes be more open from this, but there's less control. It can lead also to a healing crisis experience. People who I've talked with who've had NDEs often say how traumatic their re-entry was and that they wouldn't wish that on anybody. And yet, they come back knowing that we are more than our physical body. They have this experience of this whole other realm beyond the physical, and it's beautiful. The good news is that we don't need to have a near-death experience to gain access. We just need to open our mind and gain the right tools to work with this in a safe way. These tools have been taught by the Mystery Schools for thousands of years. And when I came to the Mystery Schools method of astral travel, it gave me really clear guidelines of what I was doing and a clear method to help me feel safe. Our goal is to help people use the tools well and safely and really recognize how they can help us reach our full potential. When we come to astral travel with the proper awareness, methods, and guidelines, we can enjoy and greatly benefit from these experiences. So what do we need to know? Let's take a deeper look at some of the do's and don'ts of astral travel. Number one is to be respectful and follow the universal laws. These include the laws of spirit, laws of nature, and the laws of the universe. What are these laws? Well, for example, we need to respect privacy and free will. We should never impose ourselves on someone else's privacy or free will. Violating another's will is essentially a form of black magic. Doing so has consequences, there's karma for it. So that means that at some point, whether later in this life or in the afterlife, those people who do will have to face the consequences of violating another person's free will. Their health might deteriorate and they get sick, or they might lose their ability to use their spiritual gifts, or they might become unstable within their mind. It can show up in different ways for different people. The way Dean Radin puts it in his book, Real Magic, he says, 
Within the magical worldview, everything is deeply interconnected. So if you intend to harm others, you are likely to end up harming yourself. This is not just because of a guilty conscience, but more like Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's just say it would be exceedingly prudent to avoid black magic. For example, there have been some cases where remote viewing was used by various governments to gather intelligence and essentially spy on people. When they were just testing it for its viability, there was no harm done. But for those who moved on to become official remote viewers for top secret programs to spy on enemy bases, some of them later suffered the consequences, depending on the extent and purpose in the use of their abilities. That's partly because they were infringing on this spiritual law of privacy and free will. It was a violation of other human beings. And sometimes they even went so far as to have expressed intent to do harm to so-called enemy forces. It's not that people can't do it, they can, but it goes against the laws of spirit and thus there are consequences. Also realize that this isn't so black and white. There's a large gray zone here. But if you stick with the guidelines I'm giving you, you'll be able to steer clear of those darker areas. People who accrue too much negative karma from using spiritual tools in such ways can often burn out or struggle with psychological tensions inside. But often they don't realize it until it's too late, or they might never connect the dots to realize these incidents are consequences of their misuse of power. We only want to use astral travel for good. There should be no ill intent. We do this for our own personal progression and learning so that we can ultimately apply it in a way that will be in service to the whole. Another general rule of thumb is to stay in the light. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're also traveling through the universe and you set your destination somewhere out in space, be sure to visit places that have light, like stars and planets are good to visit. But avoid places like black holes. The physics of black holes is that they destroy things, so don't go there. That's just common sense. Now, one way to stay safe is by aligning with divine will. Align with the light and stay focused on the light. We do this by becoming one with our divinity. Why do we want to align with the light? Well, think of it like this. When it comes to shifting our consciousness into the astral realms, we need to understand that like attracts like. It's a universal law when it comes to the spiritual and astral dimensions. So what do you want to attract? My guess is that you want to have a positive experience. The energies that will be attracted to us are the things that are like us at an energetic level. If we bring in negativity, will attract negative energy. But if we bring in positivity, then that's what we'll attract. We draw to us the things that vibrate at the same frequency level. So it's best to take time to prepare ourselves and to get into a peaceful, positive state of being. How do we prepare ourselves? Well, there are three areas that we need to prepare before we begin our astral travel journey. These are our environment, our body, and our mind. To begin with, our environment should be clean and organized. We want to avoid clutter or too much chaos. Those things affect our state of mind. The next area we need to prepare is our physical body. Just like having a clean space, it's important that our physical body is clean too. We can prepare with a warm shower or bath to help us relax. And it's best to be relaxed and also well rested so that we don't fall asleep during the journey. It's good to wear comfortable, loose fitting clothes. And it's helpful if we haven't eaten too much before starting. Also avoid caffeine or chocolate and don't use any drugs, alcohol, or mind altering substances before astral travel. We need to be clear, focused, and in control of our mind. 
Preparing the mind is key to successful astral travel. We want the mind to be calm and tranquil, not focused on the stress of life. Also, when we consciously astral travel, we are responsible for directing our journey. So we have to have a clear idea of where we're going. It's up to us to pick the exact location or dimension that we're traveling to, including how to get there. One step that is very important when it comes to preparing our environment is to create sacred space. This sacred space protects us during the astral travel experience. I'm going to hand down to you a tool called the Circle of Protection, and this is something you can use to create sacred space for your journey. We start with our hands in a triangle position, with the thumbs and index fingers touching. We then turn it over and point it at the hara, just about an inch below the navel. With intention and visualization, we breathe with chi while tracing out a circle around the seat. Be sure to touch the thumbs and index fingers here again at the far end of the circle to close it. Then retrace the circle and bring the fingers back to touching again at the hara. We repeat this movement two more times for a total of three. And voila, this establishes a circle of protection around your seat. Next, let's work with three exercises that build our foundation for safe astral travel. These exercises can be done daily to start building those energetic muscles. When it comes to astral travel, we need to stay focused. This relies on our ability to discipline our will and keep our attention focused on a singular point. Our body position for this technique is best done sitting up with the spine somewhat straight. Before starting these exercises, plan for at least 15 minutes of meditation to relax and calm your mind. Begin transitioning into that alpha brainwave state of 8 to 15 hertz and breathing in, just relaxing your body, allowing your attention to shift into the inner planes. Connect to your divinity and feel that positive energy flowing through you. After 15 minutes of meditation, then move into these exercises. Each exercise can be done for one week before moving on to the next. So on week one, begin working with the image of a dot on a wall. It can be a black dot on a white wall or a white dot on a black wall. If it helps you, you can first do it physically with construction paper or using a black circle on a blank piece of white paper. Focus on the dot with your eyes open for five minutes. Then close your eyes for five minutes. Set a timer, and when you close your eyes, recreate the dot on the wall within your mind. Hold the image. Notice how much your mind wanders. When you catch your mind wandering, gently bring it back to the dot on the wall. And hold that focus. Building focus is an essential part of being able to direct and control our astral travel experience. Practice this four times a day for five to 10 minutes each time. The more you do this dot on the wall exercise, the more you will find that you can control your mind and hold your focused attention on that singular point. On week two, we'll add on to this exercise. Once you firmly establish the dot on the wall within your mind, hold that focus for five minutes. Next, imagine the dot expanding. Expand the dot until it touches the edges of the wall. As the dot expands, this now represents the veil between the physical and astral planes. In your mind, you can go up to this expanded dot and feel it. You can even pass your hand through it and get a sense of its texture. Don't move through it entirely yet. Just keep working with controlling the expansion of the dot and get familiar with the veil. 
Again, continue working with this exercise four times a day for about 10 minutes each time. Then on week three, we're ready to start astral traveling. Prepare by having your destination in mind before you begin. Get clear on it, plan it out, and then write it down. It may be helpful to set a timer for about 30 to 45 minutes to control the length of your journey. Remember to prepare your physical space, your body, and your mind before you begin. Once you're ready, start with the dot on the wall as before. Then expand it to touch the edges of the wall. And when you go up to touch it this time, visualize it extending to become a tunnel. Keep your destination in mind, and now move through the tunnel to your destination. With astral travel, we can move at the speed of thought to anywhere that our mind can visualize. And when it comes to picking a destination, we can astral travel anywhere that we can imagine, but it has to be a place we know exists. It's a place we can locate on a map or have some kind of knowing or clarity in mind about how to navigate there. If we've been there before, or we've seen images of it, and we can visualize that place or specific location, then we can travel there. It could be any place on Earth or even someplace out in space like a star or planet. But we need to have a specific image and a general direction relative to where we are now in order to know where to go. Google Maps and NASA images can be very helpful to identify where we're going. Once we pass through the tunnel, we're traveling at the speed of thought, which is why it is so important to control our thoughts. It's instantaneous. We set our intention on where we're going and that becomes our focus point. And in an instant, we're there. It can be that fast. If you stick to these guidelines, you'll have a safe experience and be in control. Now these steps I've given here are just a start. But if you feel really ready to take it deeper, I recommend seeking out a guide with the higher training and ability to hand down the more advanced methods. Through in-person training, we can be supported in the proper energetic space and learn how to set that space at the next level for our ongoing practice at home. One of the main ways that we use higher forms of astral travel is to access the seven spiritual dimensions a place known as the Akashic Zone and the realms of spiritual beings. When we raise our consciousness up to the seventh spiritual dimension, our personality filters get cleared out of the way so that we can have a more authentic experience of higher consciousness. In order to access that, it requires having the right keys so that we can move through the other layers of the veil to get all the way up to the seventh spiritual plane. Those keys are what we call the three keys to heaven, and they're handed down orally in the mystery schools. That's because it's not just about knowing what they are, but about actually awakening those energies within you. Before we conclude, I have one final question. What kind of attitude do you think is most important when astral traveling? It has to do with having a clear purpose for why we are astral traveling. And the best attitude is to use it as a tool for progression and service. As we progress, we are then able to fulfill more of our potential and purpose, and this is true service. If you don't want to become a tourist on the astral plane, always connect to this deeper reason for astral traveling. Let's use this tool with really clear and positive intentions aligned with our higher self. Join me again as we dive into the dream time and explore different methods of conscious and lucid dreaming. I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard. Thank you for exploring these alchemical tools for life with me in this episode of Mystery Teachings.